All right, I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar, Non-QM Bootcamp, Prepping Millennial Home Buyers for Getting a Mortgage. Um, my name is Carl Holman. I'm the manager of communications here at Andy Mortgage. Um, I recognize a few people who are coming in, so you're used to the ground rules, but I'll cover them for those who have not been here in the past. Um, I do see a raised hand. I appreciate somebody getting to that a little uh, ahead of schedule. Um, so just very quickly, the rules that we have here. Uh, we are, dis are disabling microphones and uh, cameras so that we get a clean recording. So I'll answer the first question that we always get, which is, do we get recordings? And the answer to that is yes. Um, <clears throat> and then the we ask that you use the Q&A panel to type in your questions. Um, feel free to go ahead and type them during the, the webinar, um, but we won't answer them until we get toward to the formal end of the, the presentation part. Um, and then I would just ask if you could turn off your cell phones, that way you've got uh, full concentration on what's happening and what we're going to be discussing today. Um, and as we mentioned today we're going to be talking about millennial home buyers so we thought it would be good to go right to a millennial who works here at the company he's one of our top performers over on the west coast his name is michael parker um michael's been with us for uh, i think a few years he's been doing this for over a decade so um he's well versed in in all the different types of loan programs we have and with that i will turn the microphone over to you mr parker Carl, oh, thank you so much for that uh, introduction i truly appreciate it uh, just to welcome everyone, and I uh, hope everyone had a happy 4th of July yesterday. So I'm going to kind of dive right into this. Uh, we at AMD are a full-service mortgage lender providing conventional FHA and non-QM nationwide since 2005. Imperial Fund is actually a partnership with us and has played a vital role in our thriving expansion throughout the years. Uh, despite the current market conditions, as everyone has seen, uh, being one of the few companies that uh, issue non-QM securities, a and has become a leader in setting the stage and tone for non-QM market uh, with our innovative products and providing home buyer opportunities, not only for the self-employed um, and millennials, but across the credit spectrum. So as you can see, we have a huge footprint across the nationwide. Uh, we are licensed in 26 states, uh, welcoming Rhode Island, Delaware, and Nebraska being the newest to our family. And 40 of the 50 states do not require a license if it is a business purpose loan. For those of you that are not familiar with that, if it is a investment purchase or refinance and you are not licensed in that state, anything that has a little asterisk next to that on that, um, that uh, map, then you will have the ability to do that loan there. Now, what makes this different? So uh, our slogan is the power of yes. Uh, and uh, when you giving all the borrowers the ability to obtain a mortgage uh, with our innovative products, um, as well as our new LOS system that we just recently launched and our loan process that is streamlined and efficient. Millennials, uh, and everyone knows uh, the generation of millennials from 1981 to 1996. Um, for those of you who might be thinking how old I am, I'm actually 30 years old, born in 1992. Um, I was actually doing mortgages about three years after the 2008 mortgage crisis. Um, there is a poll that just popped up too for everyone. If everyone wants to take that poll so we can kind of get an idea um, of those questions as well. And according to the 2022 National Association of Realtors, uh, generational trends millennials make up 43% of the home buying population. And 36% of those are entrepreneurs. So at the age of 30, 42% of millennials actually owned homes compared to the Gen X um, who had owned 50% or 50% of them owning at the age of 30. Now, why are millennials more hesitant to, to purchase a home at the age of 30? Well, many of them have preferences, such as older properties, uh, urban areas, or even prefer moving to affordable states. Uh, I can attest to that. Many of my friends, I'm born and raised in San Diego, California. Many of my friends actually end up moving to Texas, Nevada, or even Arizona. As you can know, those prices of homes are much drastic, drastically lower than California. So owning a home, um, but the most important thing um, 
to understanding it is there are some misconceptions that we as millennials have, um, such as the overbroad spectrum of education. So not everyone needs 20% down, as many of your brokers know, um, or millennials believe that they can't qualify or that they can't own a home and be mobile. And what does that mean? Well, a lot of millennials are remote, working remote, traveling um, vigorously, going abroad uh, to different areas as well. And the next 2008, um, some millennials might be uh, afraid of that 2008. I, I know my, my parents um, were lived through that mortgage crisis um, and experienced it. And a lot of millennials don't want to experience that and are fear for that as well. And I would say what, what is the most common denominator between this all is just the lack of education that um, a lot of people have, a lot of millennials have when it comes to the home buying experience. Now, the characteristics of millennials. Well, some characteristics of us or me is that uh, they may not have um, a spouse. So they might purchase a home before even having a spouse. Student debt is a huge one. Um, the growth in student debt uh, nowadays is dramatic. A lot of people, a lot of brokers, you'll see that they don't have, that they have a lot of student debt, making it a lot more stressful to be able to even get people to qualify. Well, here at AMD, we have multiple different products um, to assist in that, and we'll dive into that as we look at the different scenarios as well. Um, and I would say the one thing that I really want to highlight on this here again is that higher home prices. Home prices are starting to rise, which can also put a fear in a lot of uh, millennials in purchasing. Millennials need different property types. Yes, we do look at different property types, um, not just the typical single family residence or a townhome. Uh, we also look at non-warrantable condos. Uh, we look at condo tells. Um, I can attest that San Diego, downtown San Diego has some condo tells as well as in uh, different parts of Coronado, um, as well as short-term rentals. A lot of us are becoming a lot more savvy and becoming the savvy investor and, and wanting to not just purchase our primary residence, but as well as a uh, short-term rental, such as an Airbnb or a uh, VRBO. Now, lending to alternative incomes. So another distinction of millennial generation is that 36% of millennials actually have started their own business. As I mentioned before, a lot of us are entrepreneurs. I actually started my own business as well prior, didn't continue on it. I love the mortgage industry more than anything. <laughs> And 49% uh, of them dream of starting their own business um, sometime in the next three years. Now, what does that mean for you? Is that you will most likely need an, al an alternative income program. Over at AD, we have multiple different programs, which we are going to dive into different scenarios to help your borrowers um, that might be millennials to uh, get them qualified. So here we have a bank statement scenario. Uh, this is Elaine. She is a businesswoman traveling around the world at least 50% of the year. Uh, to supplement her income, she drop ships, very common, uh, rents her car through a car rental service called Turo while she's aboard. Some of you might know it's similar to just like Airbnb, it's just an app where you can rent your car out. Um, and, and this is also an, um, an appreciable part of her income as well. So she wants to purchase a primary home and how does she qualify for it? So Elaine's credit score is a 758. She has a clean mortgage history. She needs a mortgage uh, for a single family residence in Newport Beach, California, uh, not too far off the coast from myself. Uh, her loan amount, it will be 577,800 with a loan to value of 80% and a 30 year fix. So uh, for some of you who might not have used this tool or might not be aware of it, we have a quick pricer um, on our website. Uh, it'll be up on the top left-hand corner, um, and it gives you the ability to price out very intuitive um, scenarios. So with this, we put in the FICO scores, LTV of 80%, single family residence at a 30-year fix, going borrower paid compensation. One thing I would like to highlight about the compensation plan is when you do get signed up with this, or if you are signed up with this and you know what the lender paid compensation is, you have that ability to click on that and choose your lender paid compensation, and that'll adjust the rate as well. 
So you'll see on there that the rate is a seven and an eighth with an eighth of a cost. Um, something else to highlight on there as well is you can adjust the discount points as well as you can adjust the rate in corresponding um, to see how much it will cost to buy it down or how much it'll cost to, um, or how much um, credit you can get back or lender credit you can get back by increasing the rate. So um, some highlights on the, oh, the bank statement program um, is that we can go as low as a 580 FICO score. Um, we can go as high as a 90% LTV uh, with loan amounts up to 4 million. All of our non-QM products only require a three month reserves with the exception of our foreign national program. Uh, we go as low as, or, or we look for as little as 12 months um, from a bankruptcy or a foreclosure. And the combination of business and personal bank statements are allowed. Uh, cryptocurrency also is accepted for reserves, down payment, and closing costs. Another scenario we have for the WVOE and or 1099 program. Uh, this is Alex. After he graduated from college, he has been working as a W2-based uh, data scientist for his friend's IT business for nine months. He resides at home with his parents while he was studying computer science and he has wisely invested in cryptocurrency market and made enough to afford using his down payment reserves and closing costs. He also makes a small amount of um, advertising revenue on YouTube as a contracted influencer, uh, creating educational videos. And he, is, he feels he is ready to buy his first home, but how does he qualify? Uh, well, he has a credit score of a 693 with no mortgage experience and he needs a mortgage for a condo that falls out of the Fannie Mae's warrantable condo um, box in Myrtle Beach. So uh, like I had mentioned before, we do non warrantable condos. Uh, this loan amount will be 176 with a loan to, uh, value of 80% at a term of 40 years. So uh, something to kind of highlight on there is that we have a 40 year fix, giving your borrowers the ability to expand the loan, um, as well as kind of lower their payment to help them qualify on a, on a debt to income ratio aspect. So plugging it into our quick price on our website uh, with the condo at 80% and a 693 FICO score using our WVOE program puts us at an 8.49 par going bar paid. So some highlights with the WVOE as well as 1099 program is we go as low as 580, up to 80% loan to value for the WVOE and up to 90% LTV for the 1099 program. Loan amounts up to 4 million, and one of the other things that I truly love to highlight is that we allow the DTI to go to 55% max, something that um, is a lot more common now with interest rates spiking up, um, as well as not being able to run DU. As you know, non-QM does not need to be ran with DU. So 55% max, uh, we do allow cash out. Um, a completed Fannie form, uh, Fannie Mae form, excuse me, with a 10, uh, 1005 for a two-year history with the same employer, and cryptocurrencies accepted for reserve down payment and closing costs. All righty, jump over to the uh, questions portion. All right, <clears throat> all right. So, so the first question, obviously, I think that. that came in was um, when you work with the millennial buyers, do you find that they tend to get some kind of sticker shock and how do you prepare them for that? If, if like you've mentioned, there hasn't been a lot of customer education. I, I apologize, you said, you, you said sticker shock? Yeah, the sticker shock question. Oh, you mean payment shock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in our guidelines, it doesn't necessarily state that we do have payment shock. Um, to kind of give an example, I am currently working on an individual who is um, a millennial uh, doing a bank statement loan, purchasing a $900,000 home at an 85% loan to value. Um, he rents currently, technically, Fannie Mae guidelines, you would most likely get payment shock on this, um, but his debt to income ratio is at a 40%. So payment shock is up to the um, underwriter's discretion. I, I would say in most cases, if you're at a low DTI, we, we wouldn't be looking at payment shock there. Okay. Uh, question about the crypto from Sean. Does it have to be liquidated before they can use it? 
Uh, liquidated, yes. So it has to be in the form of a full dollar amount in a, and we have different, um, you can use, what are the different ones? Crypto.com. Um, uh, and it has to be um, seasoned as well. So we, we have to see the seasonings that it's been in there for a while, that they've owned it for a certain period of time, um, that sort of thing. I believe it's 60 day seasoning. Yes, 60 day seasoning, same concept as bank statements. Um, if you're using the bank statements for uh, closing costs um, and reserves. Okay, uh, we have a question from Leon. What's the housing expense ratio for these programs? Um, so we test necessarily don't really look at the housing expense ratio. Just think about it as a, as a debt to income ratio. We only look at the DTI. If the DTI, if you're at an 80% loan to value, um, then we can go as high as a 55% DTI. So overall, your overall expense on your uh, debt to income ratio, we look at 55. I know with Fannie and Freddie, they typically look for a specific housing expense ratio. We just look at the full debt to income ratio as I like to just think about it. 50% max if you're going above 80%, 55 if you're at 80 or below. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, and a question from Matthew, does the, the VOE or the 1099 program require two years of the 1099? Yes, you do need to have two years of a 1099 program um, to, to, or two years of a 1099 to do 1099 because that's considered self-employment. Um, and for all of our non-QM um, programs, you have to be at least self-employed for two plus years. Okay, great. A uh, question from Muhammad about whether um, do the foreign nationals qualify for any of these programs or, or how do you deal with millennial home buyers that are foreign nationals? Um, so foreign nationals, all of our, our, our foreign national program is investment only. So it's going to be um, an investment property going DSCR program, which is the debt service coverage ratio, or a full doc. Um, it, it does have specific requirements um, as to we do need to have, um, uh, you have owned a home in the current residence of which you reside in prior outside of the country, and then purchasing an investment property. Um, within the country as well. Um, but if you have more questions in regards to the foreign national programs, feel free to reach out to me. Um, we, we have done um, it, we have done it in a case by case where we can um, go about it in different ways to get people qualified when they're foreign nationals. All right. Can you go over uh, marketing strategies? Yeah, how do you, how do you reach yeah, those? Interesting. This group. Obviously, um, social, social media is obviously large with them. Honestly, I, I would say that's the biggest thing is social media um, it, it, to reach out to those individuals. I mean, social media platforms, I, I say, are the highest rating for people who are making money. Um, the other scenario that we use of uh, drop shipping, drop shipping um, is... I would say one of the biggest things that a lot of millennials are using um, as a platform for um, income, whether it's Amazon FBA, Facebook FBA, um, that they're making a lot of money doing this and they're not aware that they could purchase a home with this sort of income. So I, I would say the best plan of action to market millennials would be Instagram, Facebook, um, and, and essentially just getting them educated. You know, a, a lot of um, my friends reach out to me for education purposes on mortgages themselves. Um, so I, I help them out as much as I can. Yeah. So you, would you advise like educational things? Like here's how to calculate your payment. Um, here's, here's how you calculate your yeah. DTI, how to, how to save money, you know, for a down payment, that kind of, those kinds of strategies. Like the basics, like what yeah. kind of credit score do you need? How much down payment do you need? I, I would say those are the two scariest things, down payment, um, credit, and what a payment would look like. Um, I would say those are the biggest things that people would need to, um, to help millennials understand the home buying process. Okay. Uh, how do you calculate the income on the condo tells? Do you use short-term rental income or long-term rental income from the appraisal? Um, so if you're getting, I, I'm assuming kind of you're responding, you're, you're, you, if you're using a, a condo tell as an investment property or long-term rental income from the appraisal. What we actually use is what I like to say, actual, uh, um, the actual rent. So if you have um, an Airbnb property, um, at least 12 months worth 
we can take that 12 months from the Airbnb, uh, what that property made, and then we'll just average it out over those 12 months. So we always take the actual rent. Now, if you have a client buying a property and the lease are 1007 off the appraisal, um, actually what, and you can get a, a rent or um, a lease agreement executed and we can use that sub side for the rent to offset any mortgage. Okay. Uh, we had a follow-up question from Zeke about the crypto, about whether it must be sold and liquidated in order to use. Um, borrowers can't pay in crypto, and can they bypass the seasoning period and wire it directly to the closing? So in regards to crypto and liquidating, it does need to be liquidated into a, um, an account, a wallet. Um, myself, I use crypto.com, so you would have to liquidate it and put it into your wallet. From there, you can um, wire it to escrow. In regards to the seasoning period, um, the only thing I can really say to that is a &D does allow exceptions. So I would say if you have a specific scenario that you want to um, talk about, um, feel free to, uh, we can go over it more in depth um, as to what the, the actual, the scenario that your client might have, whether what kind of, um, uh, cryptocurrencies they have or what they need to liquidate, what they need to sell off, how much they're going to have and what's going to be actually used for down payment and closing costs. Um, but typically we do require the same as bank statements, um, but not to say that we, we wouldn't be able to, um, whatever particular situation that you have, we wouldn't be able to do it. So I would say um, go ahead and feel free to reach out to me um, directly if you want to further uh, talk about that, Zeke. And we'll and you'll get an email out tomorrow that will have um, Michael's contact information for everybody who's registered for this webinar. So um, you'll be able to reach out to him. Uh, there is a question here about um, having marketing materials in Spanish. We don't currently have it, but we do have it on our radar of, to start translating. Um, there's a, as I recall, there's a requirement um, from a legal compliance standpoint that if you offer marketing materials in Spanish, you have to have all the other documentation in Spanish. Um, and we don't have that, I believe, at this point. Um, but we'll be working in ta 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 ah, excuse me, tandem with our compliance department to put that on the radar. Um, question from Bianca. What information do you need for the VOE 1099? Which... 1099, you just need two years worth of 1099. WVOE, you just need a Fannie Mae 1005 form filled out. And for the Fannie Mae, for the WVOE program, you don't need bank statement, or you don't need um, pay subs, uh, W-2s, or tax returns. Uh, you just need the Fannie Mae 1005 form. For the 1099, you just need two years worth of 1099. No license, or sorry, no letter from CPAs or tax attorneys? Michael, do you need for the 1099? Do you need? No, 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 no. You don't need. Okay. You don't need a. Yeah, you just need the two years worth of 1099 for that one. Yeah. All right, and then Uber drivers can they use the two-year bank statement program, even though we didn't cover the bank statement program in this webinar. Oh, we did. We that was the the first um, program that we covered. Uh, can an Uber driver use the two-year bank sorry. statement program? Um, technically, yes, because they're they're a sole proprietorship. Um, so as long as they've been doing it for two plus years and we can prove that they are still actively doing it um, and the money is going into the account, uh, a, a specific account, and we can justify each um, amount that is coming in and uh, coming over from Uber, then yes, as long as, like I said, as long as it's been two, for two plus years. Okay. Um, uh, how, do you, how do you sell a borrower on an interest rate in the high sevens and eights? Sometimes they feel like the clients would rather prep their taxes properly before take a four-year fix at 8.25. Um, yeah, that's a good question, Kimberly. So how do, how do you sell that to a, that, a millennial? That, that is a really good question. You know, uh, some people would rather prep their taxes. That, you know, um, to be completely honest, I haven't come across a broker and or client that would rather prep their taxes um, properly for two years to be able to qualify as opposed to taking a seven or 8% interest rate. You know, you know I, I truly believe that these rates aren't gonna stay the same for, we, we don't know how long they're gonna be here, but I don't 
truly believe that they will be here um, for X amount of years. Um, but selling an interest rate at that high, and essentially it's really not that high, it's just everyone was so inclined to 2020 when COVID hit that interest rates were just astronomically low. Um, and now we're just coming back to reality as to what rates can be. You know, you don't want to pay taxes, but then again, you don't want to pay for a higher interest rate. It's got to be, and this is just my complete out opinion, it's got to be one or the other. You know, either you're going to pay for your taxes or you're going to pay for the interest rate. And a lot of the times people will take the higher interest rate and we have interest only programs as well. Um, I would say the high dollar deals that I do with a lot of my brokers from a million to 2 million, a lot of the times they take an interest only program on a 30 or 40 year fix. Keep in mind with me saying that with a 30 year fix, it is a 10 and 20. So you have to qualify as the 20 year as well as the 40 is a 10 and 30. So it, it's just a matter of justifying whether they want to pay for the taxes or whether they want to pay for the higher interest rate just to get them qualified based off of a, a self and, um, a self-employed program, um, you know, that, that's just the approach or they pay to, to buy the rate down a little bit. Um, but overall, I mean, there, there are options to try and suit the, uh, the client or the borrower's needs, um, whether it's a lower, a lower payment um, or an extended payment going 40 years. Um, yeah, so there's a question again, it, it, in terms of using a crypto wallet to show the seasoning, um, they feel that it might be a little misleading, but do you want to clarify that again, again, so, just on the crypto? So if you have, um, uh, if you have uh, X amount of dollars in your, it, that are worth off of all of your Bitcoin, um, all your different types of cryptocurrency, and it adds up to $100,000 on that day at that time, and you want to use 50,000 of it for closing costs and reserves, you do have to sell all that and put that into an account um, for then you can then transfer it over. But you, we do need to see the bank or the, the, the account statements for at least two months just to show that you just didn't randomly put that money in there and then pull it out, if that makes sense you know, or put that money in there from another account to show that it's in there. Um, essentially, what we're trying to do with crypto is to be able to use that money for down payment and closing costs, just as you would a bank account. All right. Great. Um, okay, for both, I guess we, we cover both the bank statements and the VOE program and 1099. Um, what's the LTV range on the 580 FICO score on those lower spectrum bands? That is a fantastic question. I am going to say on a 1099 and WVOE program with a 580 FICO score, I believe we're going to be looking in the, um, yeah, I want to say 60% range. range. I'm going to check that real quick for you guys. And it just also, if you guys want to write this down, for those of which um, you can always go to to check out our matrixes, is go to 80mortgage.com slash rates. And the password is just going to be 80 mortgage. That'll give you the, the matrix if you aren't signed up with us as an approved broker, um, which those rates will get sent out to you on a daily basis if you are signed up as a broker. Um, but if you were to go to, down to a 580 FICO score, we would be looking at a 70% LTV. Um, maximum. All right. All right. Um, how do you overcome the lag in life stages most millennials are facing, such as education and seminars? A lack in A lag in um, life stages. Oh, uh, maybe the question is about, I guess, buyer maturity, which is sort of what you were. Got it. So how do you overcome the lag in life stages? Okay. Um, and most millennials are facing education seminars. Yeah. Um, oh, the fact that they live most, they mostly live with their parents. Okay. That's, it was getting Yeah. Close. Yeah. I, I completely understand what that, I would say, yeah, education seminars, um, you know, a, a lot of, I would say they're, 
they're making money, um, potentially not even using it in the right way, maybe. Um, but it, it all boils down to, like you said, the education and um, the, the approach of giving them the, the ability to um, get help. So whether it be from brokers, um, agents, because um, buying a house is, is not just a one-step process. You have brokers involved, you have real estate agents involved, um, and, and just making sure they are fully aware of the process. Um, I mean, I, I'm in the process of purchasing a home right now and it's, and I'm in the mortgage industry and it's still, it still can be stressful. So just kind of putting the, putting them in, in their shoes that, um, it, it's a stressful situation. None of us are educated going through high school, um, credit history or credit, understanding credit, uh, and that sort of thing. So, um, it can be a stressful process. And I would say, like you said, the best thing is educational and seminars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question about cold. What about cold storage crypto? Cold storage. That's interesting. I've never heard of that. Term yeah, before. I've never heard of that either. The only thing that I could potentially think that you're, you're thinking of cold storage is that it's been sitting there for a while and there's no purchasing or selling off. And it's just sitting there. So I would say if that's the case, then it would be just the same as a, if it's a bank statement and I have a savings account with $100,000 in it and I haven't touched it. It's just incurring interest over the time um, or it's depreciating as crypto might be. So uh, I have it on a, on a USB drive off. So it can't get hacked. Got it. So in other words, you have it on a USB drive it's in a wallet, then that should be fine. Um, that, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay. That's smart. You have it offline. Yeah, that should not be an issue then. Um, as long as it, as long as we can see that it's the, any transaction history, obviously you probably won't have any transaction history. Um, but yeah, that should be fine. That it, As long as we, we're basically looking for the same thing as if we would for bank statements. Money coming in, money going out. Has it been sitting there for longer than sixty days? If it has, then we're sure, then we're good. Okay. Uh, uh, many lenders. Question from Kimberly about noticing that a lot of lenders are doing non-QM programs. Um, from our experience, to stay competitive and keep the clients from shopping, do we typically go borrower paid, particularly for loan amounts between one and two million? Um. I would say nine out of 10 times, all of my brokers that do anywhere between $1 million to $2 million loan amounts will typically go borrower paid. Um, I will say what they will, what they will do is say the interest rate comes out to seven and a quarter, or let's just say, let's just say seven and an eighth with an eighth of a credit. Um, a lot of my brokers will increase the interest rate sell them on an increased interest rate with a lender credit of, for example, just for lack of um, uh, number sake, say the lender credit is half a point um, and the interest rate is 7.75 with a half point credit, then they'll just charge an extra half a point on top of that. Um, you'll see that credit obviously in, um, deducted in the closing costs on the loan estimate on the second page. Um, but I would say nine times out of 10, most of the time they'll go borrow paid um, with these instances, especially with the higher loan amounts. Okay, great question. All right, I see Zeke's got his hand up. Let me unmute him for a second if there's something he wanted to ask. All right, um, hey Zeke, Zeke, if you wanna unmute yourself, go ahead and ask the question you had. Yeah, that was a mistake. I, I, fi I figured out how to ask the question. Got so. it, okay, great, thanks. Okay, so I'll lower him. Okay, well, we'll give questions a few more minutes to percolate. I'll go ahead and cover the kind of the close out here of the webinar and we'll see if we get any more last minute questions. Um, so as Michael's indicated, he's talked a few times now about Quick Pricer. Um, we have been developing a lot of technology over the last six months or so, um, really aimed at, at 
helping brokers expand their pipeline and work faster and better with us. Um, quick pricer is obviously a, a major one where you can price out your non-QM scenarios. Um, we've also built a centralized appraisal center um, where you can manage upwards of 24 AMCs that we have currently approved to work with us. Um, so, so you won't have to go off to 25 different websites and go fill out and become partners with all of them. Um, you can house it all in one central location. Um, and we also have AD Studio, which is similar to Canva. It's a web-based marketing platform where you can go in and create an account, load up your picture, put in all your contact information, your corporate branding colors, and then it'll auto-populate into existing templates for social media, email, product flyers, um, and then you can go in there and kind of tweak them as you need to see as you see fit um, and then either email them out, print them, take them to a trade show, um, hand them out at open houses, whatever your, your needs are at the time. Um, so that's also available directly from the homepage. Um, broker education is a huge thing with us, um, both in terms of helping you guys understand how to work with us as well as our technology. Um, we do these every week at one o'clock East Coast Standard Time. Um, so next week, we're going to have an open forum with our broker support team. Um, so if you're a regular participant of these, go ahead and prep any questions you may have on working with something like Automated Decision Maker or Appraisal Center or some of other, other tech platforms, or you have general questions about our loan programs that can't wait for some of the other webinars we've got coming up. Um, we are going to do a deep dive with the folks that uh, created AD Studio. Uh, we did this earlier in the year and it was pretty popular. So we, we brought it back by demand. Um, so again, we'll show you the ins and outs on how to build different things within AD Studio. Uh, we get a lot of requests for an overview of the different programs that we offer here at Andy. So we'll be doing that on the 26th. Um, and then we've had a couple of specific scenario, or not scenario requests, but requests for lectures or, or webinars on ordering appraisals and using appraisal center. Uh, so we're going to have one of those as well. Um, and we've got other ones that are built out. Uh, they'll probably be launching. The August ones will probably be posting up in the next week or so, but we've got a series built out really till the end of September. Um, surprisingly, we didn't get this question, but typically we do, which is, um, will you be getting a recording of this? And the answer is yes, you will. Um, it will be emailed to you from the Zoom platform that we use to host the webinars. Um, and if you don't get it, you can always go to the AD Learning Center on our website. Um, we have every webinar that we've ever done in this series this year. Um, so some of the the specialty topics that I think a couple of people have asked about, whether it's foreign nationals, um, W-2 programs, all those, there, they, we've got a lot of those sitting in the archives. Um, so you can always go there. Um, and when you log out, there'll be a brief six question survey that we just ask you to take a minute or two to tell us how we did, any topics you might wanna see in the future. Um, but things like that in general, um, how you heard about these webinars. Um, and then you can stay engaged with us on social media. We were active on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You'll see every video, every, again, the webinars are also posted there. Uh, so we've got a ton of video content um, that we produce on a weekly basis. Um, we also have a news chat on a platform called Telegram that's Similar to WhatsApp, it's a little bit more secure, but um, you'll be able to communicate out with people that you work with, with people that are here. Um, and there's also a Q&A section on there that if you have questions about rates, you can just, at the click of a button, pretty much find anything you need right there. Um, and then we're participants to exchange groups called Non-QM Exchange on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Um, so you're welcome to join those. Um, and with that, um, I would also encourage you, if you're not already an existing partner, um, to go ahead and potentially start the process with us. Uh, you can start that right from the, the main page of the website as well. Um, we did have a last minute question here about whether we do ITIN borrowers. Um, technically, so short answer, uh, we don't have a program uh, or if 
something in our guideline that says I-10. The only thing that says I-10 is foreign national. Now, do we not do them? No, we do do them. Um, and this is something else I wanted to kind of touch on as well. If you have an interesting situation, um, particular scenario um, that you never come across, um, I, I love that. That's my bread and butter. I, I love to work scenarios and trying to figure that out. And, and that's another reason why I work for A&D because we do everything we possibly can um, to assist and help clients um, get a mortgage. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I, I believe you will get my information as well. And I would love to go over yes. any scenarios that you might have. Yep. And we've had, I've sent it to a few people who've had specific questions awesome. here. So, so you should be, you'll probably get a flood of questions after we log out. Perfect. Um, so, um, all right. Well, with that, I don't see any more questions coming in. So we can go ahead and I think call it a day here. Um, again, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, we hope you join us again next week uh, when we cover the broker support team um, or any of the others in the upcoming schedule that we've got. Um, so again, thank you, Michael, for taking your time out and being a highly knowledgeable millennial that can help other millennials know how to buy a house. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Carl. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody.